for Martinez, originally from Argentina. He's lived in Spain, now near Oxnard, California. Half-inch arm length advantage for Bonima, measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. They both weighed in at or under the 154-pound weight limit, and tonight, unofficially, they are identical in weight at 165. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Sergio Martinez, Alex Bonima fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. The doctor or the referee can stop the fight. In case it's caused, caused by an accidental headbutt, we go to the scorecards if the four rounds have been completed and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. Thank you, Harold. We're on the verge of starting the action. Let's go to ring announcer Jake Gutierrez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Interim Super Welterweight Championship. Introducing first, he'll be fighting out of the blue corner. He entered the ring wearing the black trunks and he weighed in at 152 and a half pounds. His professional record stands at 30 victories with five defeats and two draws with 16 wins by knockout. Originally from Kinshasa, Congo now lives and fights out of Memphis, Tennessee. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Alex, the technician, Bonima. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. He's wearing the black trunks with gold trim, and he weighed in at 154 pounds. He has an outstanding professional record consisting of 43 victories with only one defeat and one draw, with 23 wins by knockout. Originally from Quilmes, Argentina, he now lives and fights out of Madrid, Spain, introducing Sergio Maravilla Martinez. Ahí, Sergio, vámonos. Ok, gentlemen, you had your instructions downstairs. Decir las instructions allá abajo. Los dos calzones están altos. So aquí está perfectamente bien. Right here is, a, is, is legal. Ok? Right. Now, shake hands, dense la mano y buena suerte a los dos. Good luck Love. to both of you. Love. Máximo. For Bunima. Martinez is another in a long line of really good, solid fighters that he's had to face throughout his career. He wins more than he loses against them. Bunima represents probably the toughest fight of Martinez's career so far. Martinez is a very good boxer. And you see that Martinez is a southpaw. Slick, quick southpaw. Not exactly the favorite opponent for fighters in the 154 pound or any other weight class. And Alex Bonima, who uh, labors to make the 154-pound weight limit, but does it with style and class every time, looks to be in terrific shape, Lennox. He looks in great shape, and he's got long arms as well. And I noticed Martinez is, was moving to his right, and I think that would be a mistake because he's moving on to his right hand, and that's a powerful hand for Bonima. Within the past year, Bonima has scored thrilling knockout victories over both Roman Carmison and Walter Matisse to raise his career to a higher level after having been in against some of the toughest guys in the division and at one point moving up to fight Jermaine Taylor at 160 pounds when Taylor was on his way toward the title showdowns with Bernard Hopkins that made him the middleweight champion. Early in Bunima's career facing the likes of J.C. Candelo and Tony Marshall, Michael Lerma, Kasim Uma, Bronco, I mean, the list goes on and on, Bronco McCart. He won about as much as he lost, and recently in two fights that he could have lost, two fights where he was not the clear favorite against Carmazan and Matisse, he was able to win, so maybe he's figured something out. Indeed, in some divisional rankings, the number one ranked fighter in the division is Verno Phillips. If you keep him there after Vernon Forrest's comeback win over Sergio Mora, and Bonita's career is not that different from Verno Phillips in character. Faced and beat Verno Phillips earlier in his career. Martinez has really established himself throwing his jab, and this is what you need to do. You need to be first. If you if you look on if you look if you really want to win this fight, you gotta be first. Establish that jab and start piling up the points. Oh, well, we talked about Benima's career. Sergio Martinez has 27 consecutive victories, seven by knockouts in the last eight and a half years since the only loss of his career. February 19, 2000 on the undercard of the first, 
Eric Morales versus Marco Antonio Barrera fight against a then little known Mexican welterweight named Antonio Margarito. You know, I said Verno Phillips. I quickly glanced at um, Bunima's record. I don't see Phillips' name. I must be thinking of Vince Phillips, who he fought and beat. Different kind of fighter. Yes, sorry, Verno. Ben Benima needs to really pick it up a little bit because he's really given this first round away. He's not really doing anything. And maybe he's the kind of boxer that gets off to a slow start, but needs to get it together right now. Well, the, the point is that Bunima has fought yes, everyone you can think of just about, with the exception of Verno Phillips. So he's not going to see a whole lot new here. And this is a new level for Martinez. Lewis told you that Martinez established his jab and with it appeared to win round one over Alex Bonima. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Very nice, Martinez. Very nice. That's the way we have to work. At the distance. That's the way to do it. This guy can't even catch you in the bathroom in my home. That's one by one. Can't even catch you there. You gotta touch him and move. Touch him and move. Touch him and move, and little by little, you're gonna hurt him. Little by little, you'll hurt him. Move forward behind your jab. Okay, you got it? It's all yours, man. Get back. Right. Watch your head also, dude. Don't get cut with the Okay, that's good. All right, that's it, David. Keep doing what you're doing. Just move the head a little more okay. behind the jab. Okay. Okay. That's the mouthpiece. Copy box numbers in round one. Martinez, nine out of 45, and Benima, only three out of 30. Benima didn't land the punch in the first minute and 50 seconds by CompuBox count, so a little bit of a slow start, as Lennox pointed out. But he lost the first couple of rounds to Roman Carmazan last year in Madison Square Garden before coming down the stretch tactically and intelligently to start landing hard punches against Carmazan, and he knocked him out in the 10th round. So you can't rule Benima out because of a relatively slow round one. From Sergio Martinez, who started boxing late in life by boxing standards, ne nearly 20 years old, when he picked the sport up, is he's a fantastic athlete. He's a natural athlete, Martinez. And, um, you know, natural athleticism plus slick southpaw style, it's tough to beat. He had the good feet of a soccer player and the stamina of a bicyclist to bring into the sport of boxing. But still, Lennox, to take it up at 20 and develop superior technique is not easy to do. Unbelievable. A lot of people would say he's a late starter, but a lot of late starters can't really get it together. And some people actually pick it up naturally. And Martinez was able to pick it up naturally, and he wants to get better. This is, this is what makes him a great fighter. It was actually one of his soccer coaches who suggested that he should try boxing training to further enhance his stamina. And he says that within the first month in the gym, he realized, this is my sport. Hard right hand by Benima. The only loss on his record to a then unknown fighter out of Mexico, Antonio Margarito. And otherwise, in 40 plus fights, Martinez has never lost. Martinez was knocked out in seven rounds by Margarito, though he was favored in the fight. At that point, of course, Margarito had four losses on his record, and nobody really valued him for what he would ultimately turn out to be. So you see Benima is starting to try to set Martinez up for straight right hands, the basic staple for the conventional fighter against a southpaw. Yes, but one of the things he's doing, he's not really setting it up with the jab. He's not giving Martinez anything to worry about. That's why Martinez is able to go about his work quite naturally. You know, he's having fun in there. He's not getting hit, he's being relaxed, and this is the way he likes to fight. Benitez needs to give him a lot more pressure and let him think about a lot more things. Good jab by Martinez, followed up the straight left hand. Martinez fighting arrogantly now with his hands at his waist. You might see more of that later on this evening from Yuri Orcas Gamboa in the third fight on the card. About eight years ago, Bunima faced Kasim Uma, also a slick, busy fighter, and was stopped in five rounds. Also a southpaw. Mm -hmm. Right now, Sergio Martinez just believes that he's so quick that there's nothing Alex Bonima can do with it. Usain Bolt pocketed three gold medals in Beijing and is the fastest man in history. 
Brian Gumbel catches up with the Jamaican superstar in his hometown outside Montego Bay on the next Real Sports, October 21, October 26. The return of our Emmy Award winning series 24-7. This time our cameras will be following Joe Kalzaki and Roy Jones as they prepare for their showdown next month in the ring. When you land a big right hand like that, come back with a left hook, okay? And get inside and work that body again. You're doing good, okay? Need a little more punches, though. Okay. Pick it up a little bit, okay? Hey. Start applying more pressure. Yeah, give him some. Y baja la mano. Si te sentís cómodo, le baja la mano, okay? You feel comfortable, bring your head down. Interpreting in Martinez to corner is the excellent Jerry Olaya. And Billy Sumrall, the trainer in Alex Benema's corner, is nothing if not calm as he shows not a great deal of urgency asking his fighter to throw more punches by CompuBox count. Benema only threw 24 punches in the second round and landed only three. So he's off to an exceptionally slow start in the first couple of rounds against the very fast Sergio Martinez. Who we'll opened this round with a beautiful double jab and throws that left hand nice and straight, Martinez does. He's not only feeling good, but he's looking good at this point. Showboating. Popping the jab at will. There's great snap behind that jab. This is the kind of jab you need. The only problem is when he's throwing out that jab, that left hand is dropping a bit low away from his chin to protect it, so he has to be careful of that. Right now, Alex Benema is experiencing failure to launch. He's being beaten to the punch by a quicker fighter. He, he's being outclassed so far, which is saying a lot for Martinez. It's very surprising. And it's interesting, you know, I, I failed to see a game plan by Benina. Well, the game plan may have gone out the window with the blinding show of speed early on for Martinez. The, the winner of this fight, I, re I really have contempt for these silly sanctioning bodies, but the winner of this fight is a sanctioning body mandatory for Vernon Forrest. Oh. Hard left hand puts Benina on his back. And you had to know that that might be coming after a while if Panema couldn't find a way to solve the growing puzzle of Martinez's quickness, his arrogance, his brilliant style. What a show by Sergio Martinez. And finally, Panema out loud, or lashes back out with a straight right hand. Panema's got to give Martinez something to think about, and that's going to take some effort. Now well, he, he needs to. He needs to right now get, get on his get on his feet and start moving around and throwing some more jabs to even keep Martinez away from him. Realizing that Martinez wants to knock him out, he should be setting him up, trying to set him up with that right hand, make Martinez come into that right hand. The, the point about Vernon Forrest is that given his, um, the problems he has with his left arm and the fact that he's not the fighter he once was, if you were Vernon Forrest watching Martinez or Vernon Forrest's handlers, would you want to fight Martinez? Should he go on to win this fight? Is it, he, he he's, has a comfortable lead right now. The, the answer is no, but Martinez is putting on the kind of performance so far that can create some real demand. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously Martinez is hyped up to be on HBO's Boxing After Dark and get, you know, get some exposure, give people a chance to see him, to develop the kind of market power he needs to fight bigger name fighters like Vernon Forrest. That's what he's looking for. And, and he, he plays to the crowd. He's doing it so far. When he's coming in at you, let that right hand go. Step in and let the right hand go when he's coming in at you, okay? Okay. Okay? Just let that right hand go when he's coming in at you, okay? Here. He's waiting. He's waiting for you to go to him. He's, he's messed up. He's messed up. Jeff. Sergio, listen, he's messed up, but he's waiting for you to come in because that's what he's looking for. He's looking for that, Martinez. Understand? Relax, relax. relax. Let him, let him build it up, build it up. He's falling on it by himself. And here we're going to see the knockdown. And here comes the jab, right hand, and it's actually the left hand. Came back with a left hand that knocked him straight down. And Bonima had no feet behind him. He was caught square-footed. That was a brilliant round for Sergio Martinez. 
28 out of 68 by CompuBox count, including 19 of 28 power connects. Harold, how do you have it so far? <laughs> Look at you, three rounds to nothing, 30 to 26, Sergio Martinez. You know, Jim, he won that third round so big, I wouldn't argue with any judge that called it 10-7 instead of 10-8. I mean, he deserves that one extra point to score in a knockdown, but he really won that round very, very big. Uh, Sergio Martinez looks like a guy that grew up watching Roy Jones. Uh, I love that shoulder shake. Really something else. He's very, very quick. Where did this fight be? Three to nothing, Martinez. And some of that Jones-like electricity that he's showing is not just the fabulous boxing exhibition, but he's punching with power, Jim, and that kind of excitement that he creates against a so sturdy-chinned guy like Benima to knock him down with that straight left hand and clearly rattle him with other punches. That's the kind of performance, even though Martinez is 33, he's a fresh, young 33. That's the kind of performance that's really a star-making turn. Also, Max, accuracy and power he's using as well. All those things play a great role in winning this fight. And here's what it has me thinking. Vernon Forrest is one thing, but how about a rematch with Antonio Margarito? Look at the size, the strength, and the speed of Martinez. The southpaw stance, a fight with Margarito might be very interesting. I'm surprised that he has, isn't calling for that fight because if I would have lost him in my first couple of fights, I would have went back to try and fight the person that beat me. Maybe not if it was Antonio Margarito. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But he acknowledged yesterday, he said, look, it's always in the back of my mind. I don't think it should be my definition. I don't think about it all the time. But yeah, it's always in the back of my mind. Well, certainly, you know, at the time he lost to a no-name, Martinez did. And that guy's not a no-name anymore. Oh, no. You can understand, too, where Vernon Forrest has paid his dues in this game and is looking for big money fights against big name opponents. Is not looking to fight every young, hungry, or younger, hungry fighter like Sergio Martinez. But when you start looking around at junior middleweight, based on what we're seeing so far tonight, how many guys would you favor over Martinez at this moment? Of course, that moment can change if Punima lands something heavy, but... Well, the top 10 list in the junior middleweight division features names like Verno Phillips, Daniel Santos, Joaquim Alcine, Serge Zindrizak, Noel Julio, Corey Spinks, Sergio Mora, they're, they're good fighters, and in Zindrasek's case, he's unbeaten and getting ready to fight Joel Julio over in Europe, but how many of them are a step up in class for Martinez at this point? He's looking for bigger, better competition. Looking spectacular. I'll tell you, Martinez threw a jab, and Benima didn't even see it coming, it was so fast. This is a brilliant performance so far, and maybe Benima will find a way to solve it. But so far, this is a stunning sort of Big audience debut for Sergio Martinez. Very nice, very nice, very nice Martinez, very nice. Good, 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 good. Good, good, good. Keep working like that, just like that. Keep working like that. And touch him more with the left. Touch him more with the left. With pop, pop it, all right? Press him, when you catch him, you gotta put that left hand right behind him. On the inside, throw it, okay? Go in it, Sergio. And here we see Martinez throwing some jabs, which Panima has no answer for. <laughs> Continually. Copy box numbers on power shots through round four. Martinez, 43 out of 96. Bunema, 7 out of 46. A wipeout for Sergio Martinez. I'm a sucker for a slick southpaw, especially one with some punching power and some real hand speed. But he's also mobile, Martinez. Good-looking guy, does some modeling. He has some uh, star potential from what I've seen so far tonight. up in Argentina, has lived the last seven years in Spain, now planning, he says, to move full-time to Port Wainini, California, above Oxnard, where he's been training most recently. A full-time American base will give him a greater chance at doing the kind of business he wants to do in the sport. He's a little like Joe Calzaki in the sense that the, you know, the dossier of 44 wins is marked by a lot of names that Americans don't recognize. But this kind of talent 
is unmistakable. I, I've seen tape on Martinez in the past, and um, I've never seen him quite look like this against an opponent like Bunima. He hasn't been in with a guy, at least with the name recognition of Bunima in this country, but this is really a coming out party. Bunima thought maybe he was going to have a chance to outclass a guy who hadn't been in against the same kind of opposition. So far, it's been the other way around. Hard left hand by Martinez. Benima still looking for answers and still probably Lennox not throwing it up. Yeah, he's not throwing enough. I mean, if he really wants to win this fight, he needs to do something very drastic, and what he's doing now is, isn't drastic enough. We have Angulo coming up a little bit later on tonight. Two and good jabs from Benima. Angulo's a guy also linked to Margarito, made his bones sparring with Mar Margarito over the last three years. He's undefeated. He's a terrific puncher and a terrific fighter. But um, not, they're not looking to put Angulo in with a guy who moves around. And Martinez here is clearly not only highly mobile, but explosive as a puncher, as a boxer. Tremendous performance. And you know what? He does really well when he has Benima Bene against the ropes. He starts throwing more punches, which is great because he understands that there's nowhere for Benima to go, and this is where he can get his points in. He's just so fast. You know, it, it, every time Bonima throws a punch, he risks the counter. And Martinez has been fast and stiff. Hard pops with his counter punches. And when he wants to start things off, he gets his jab going before Bonima gets a chance to unleash. Stop at the bell. Find it like a punch. Meanwhile, coming up in the next fight, Alfredo Angulo from Mexicali, Mexico. 2004 Olympic star for Mexico. Another fighter with tremendous confidence in himself. How much confidence? Well, you heard Max Kellerman mention his time in the gym sparring with Antonio Margarito. Yesterday, Angulo had the nerve to say to us, the last time I sparred with Margarito, El Pedro up here, and he held his hands above his head. Margarito down here, and he held his hand around his chest. And yesterday, here at the casino, there was a long line of autograph seekers lining up in front of Angulo thinking that they were about to get an autograph from Antonio Margarito. They might be getting an autograph from a guy who one day beats Margarito if and when they ever fight at 154 pounds. Antonio Margarito fights, of course, at 147. But when you look at him in the ring, you wonder, how did he make 147? It certainly would not be a problem in the eyes of most for him to move up and fight at 154. He's done it before, but not with the same spectacular results as he gets in the welterweight class two difficult fights with Daniel Santos at 154 for Margarito. Fights he would rather forget than remember. Take your hand out, Alex. Get your hand. So far in the fight, Alex Bonima is averaging, by CompuBox count, three landed punches per round. He's gotten a little better in the last couple of rounds, probably realizing that if he doesn't get started soon, it isn't going to happen. Round six of a scheduled 12. Martinez, unlike a lot of slick southpaws, is not defensively oriented. He's looking to land punches. He's not, in boxing parlance, a scary fighter, which means he's actually scared of his opponent in every last punch. And so occasionally he is going to be clipped because he's looking to do damage. He's got Benima in trouble again with a series of hard head shots and goes to the body effectively there. Benima was trying to protect his head. Martinez popped him right in the middle of the belly. Mixing his punch as well, Lennox. He's mixing his punch as well, and he's doing the right thing because he's, get, he's showing him different angles while he's punching. He's, he's throwing them high, he's throwing them low. So Benima doesn't know what to expect, doesn't know what to prepare for because Martinez shows a diff, different array of punches. He'll throw left, right, left, back again, different combinations, and giving him a lot of problems. And if Benima's waiting for some kind of a drop-off, one look at Martinez's body tells you there isn't likely to be any fade. Nord's record of 43 wins, a loss and a draw, the loss against Margarito, 23 knockouts. So he's gone the distance a bunch of times and has over 40, exactly 45 professional fights. He's looking for his 28th consecutive win, 17 of the preceding 27 wins by knockout. 
since the loss to Margarita, February 19, 2000. Benina coming off the knockout wins within the past year against Parmesan and Matisse, name fighters. Neither of them had anywhere near the speed of Sergio Martinez. Blindingly fast for a 154-pound fighter. I filtered through my memory trying to think of who I've seen at 154 who was in the same speed category with Sergio Martinez. Oscar De La Hoya and Shane Mosley at their peaks. Not now, at their peaks. Another clinic round for Sergio Martinez, who again strolls around the ring and plays to the crowd. That's it, that's it. Change of the rhythm, change of the rhythm. He's going down, he's going down. He can't resist so many punches. He can't resist. Keep changing up the pace. You see how it came in? You see how it took effect? But careful. Right hand go and start trading with this walker. Going into the seventh round, you yeah. gotta start fighting. This is your fucking ring, not his. You understand I got that? You, I got you. He's okay. not your boss, Alex, but he looks like he's your boss. You need okay. to go out there and show him who's boss and lead with your right hand. He's standing right there. Martinez throwing that double jab left hand and they're coming so straight. Banima has no answer to these punches. Martinez landed 32 punches in the last round by CompuBox count. That's his high connected number for the fight. The level of urgency has gone way up now in Banima's corner where finally a manager crept in along with the trainer to say, look, you've got to change things in a hurry. Benima only with five connected punches in the round. Harold, how do you have it halfway through? Nothing, Jim. Six to nothing, 60 to 53, Sergio Martinez. Jim, what makes this more amazing is when you get a boxer and he's in a small 18-foot ring and he can do what this guy's doing. I mean, you know, this is not a big ring where he's got a whole lot of room to run. Sergio Martinez takes him in the middle of the ring and out boxes him beautifully just like he's doing right here. Alex Benima swelling around both eyes, looking terribly busted up. What gets me about this fight is Bonima, uh, you know, he reacts to every faint. Whenever Martinez faints, he just stops. Six to nothing, Sergio Martinez. Bonima landed one right hand after the right, urgent stop. instruction in the ring or in the corner to lead with the right hand. But that, of course, as I mentioned at the beginning of the fight, is the standard tactic for a conventional fighter against the southpaw. But Martinez is no conventional southpaw. Now Bonima comes back with two right hands. Trying to assert himself and do something in the fight. And getting popped with the jab again. Lennox, yeah. what about the hands held so low for Martinez? Well, you know, when I'm looking at the hands held so low, he knows what he's doing. It doesn't, it's, it doesn't stay there for long, but he feels very comfortable right now, so he's able to do it. The only one thing that I'm worried about is, is Benima's right hand, and that can change, could change things if he's able to catch Martinez. Curse of the gifted, Jim. He's fast enough to get away with it. Martinez is, so he does it. It would be better if he kept his right hand up. Another stunning combination of punches. And I gotta tell you, referee Raul Caiz has to be thinking, how much longer can Benima take that kind of punishment? And Benima elected to hold there because he was receiving a lot of punishment. Look at that. It all starts with that crisp jab. Fight back, Alex. Show me something. Referee is saying to fight back to Benima because he's looking at him and thinking about maybe Stop. stopping it unless he fights back. Now, Harold made a good point. Tremendous swelling around both of Benima's eyes. There's another blistering jab. These are not love taps, these jabs. These are hard pops. He's, he's distinguishing himself here, Martinez. We've seen Southpaws on HBO in recent years with upsets and near upsets. Um, Luis Colazzo against Ricky Hatton, nearly an upset. Carlos Quintana beat Paul Williams, beat Joel Julio. But, and it's easy to kind of categorize people, these fighters, junior middleweight, welterweight range. Oh, look at these shots. Yeah, I think that Caius is seconds away. If Martinez drives Benima into the ropes with another hard three or four punch combination, you might see a stoppage. Caius was very close to raising his arms there at the end. 
And I think he's stepping in the corner to have a, have a look, close look at Benina. All right, Alex. Let's go back here a second. Let's go back here. Come on. Now, look at me, look at me. Get your hand out of the way. Look at me. All that thing with your eyes. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. Uh -huh. All right, Alex, you got to show something this round. Come on, okay? You hit him with a good right hand, and there, just press forward and let your hands go go to war, okay? That's all, right. all you got to do. Come hey, on, listen. keep your hands up, though, when you're moving backwards. You have your hands up. Alex, move your head to the left and throw everything you got with that right hand. He's right there. Okay, okay. You're waiting for him to come in, and then you're chasing him. Okay, okay. All right. Okay. okay. This is it. With the right hand. This is it, Alex. This is it. Hey, I got, I got some. Some. All right. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on. Dig deep and let it go. Yeah, come on, Not dig this. deep and let it go. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't need to see how tough you are. I need yeah. to see how good you, know you are. Tough okay. 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 See that on, again? It's over. Come on. Come on. Lennox, you've never been in that position, but speculate for me. He hears what the corner is saying to him. What's going through his mind? Well, he wants to be successful. In what he wants to be able to go out there and do it. Whether his body can do it, whether he's his mind can tell his body to to do it is the question. But I don't think so. Right now, he's thinking of a way to get rid of Martinez and. What his, trainer was, what his trainer said in the corner was right. He has to throw that right hand to try and land on Martinez's his chin. I love, that was great corner work, guys. They said everything right. Number one, you got to just turn this into a, a slugfest with Martinez because you're never going to win trying to box him. And number two, they didn't just say go out and get wild. They told him how to do it. Throw the right hand. Turn it into a brawl. Set him up for the right hand. Their general advice was good, and their specific information was good, too. And he's trying it, but the body isn't there to do it. He's simply physically overmatched in the ring. Unless Martinez makes some significant mistake here, it isn't going to happen. He has thoroughly dominated Alex Benema from the opening bell, and he's done it on merit. It's a problem of style, no, no, no. speed, Stop. skill, Break. all areas. I, I began to say last round, Comparing Martinez to Colazzo and um, Quintana, two good southpaws we've seen score upsets and near upsets on HBO. The difference is he does it with a little more electric stuff, more much, punching power, much, more athleticism. Much stronger. And, and I think as a result has distinguished himself among that pack tonight. He's not just another good schooled slick southpaw. Benima has landed one right hand in this round. And you know, Benima wants to throw the right hand. He wants to hit Martinez. But can he is the question, and he can't. When should the corner throw in the towel, Lennox? They don't want their fighter to get badly hurt. No, I mean, he's not being hurt. He's, he's, if you hear him in the corner, he seems pretty, uh, he seems OK, he seems alert. But as far as getting and throwing the punches, this is what he's not doing. It's like his mind said, you know, he wants to do it, but something in his mind's turned it off. What about the level of discouragement that goes with being this kind of dominated? He's not ready to end his career. He wants to 154 pound weight class. How many rounds do you allow him to be so dominated? Well, if I was in his corner, I would it, tell him to do something in this round. If I don't see it, then I'm taking him out of the fight. The corner's fight in a very tough position because Bunima can punch, and he's rugged, and he has heart. So there's always that chance he lands something heavy, especially against a guy who carries his hands low. And fights have ended that way. You know, it's been one-sided throughout the whole fight, and then it only takes one punch to divert history. And there you see Bunima in trouble right now. I know what you're talking about. I watched Mickey Ward knock out Alfonso Sanchez with one left hand to the body after being thoroughly ripped for eight rounds. So it has happened. I agree with Lennox right here. One more round at most, or else you stop it right now. Yeah, I know. Hang on, hang on. You all right, Alex? I'm fine. Huh? Hey, we'll get, we'll get this guy's tired round. too, Alex. This guy's tired too, okay? Alex? Yeah. Okay? This guy's Talk tired to too. Talk to me. Okay, you got to know that you can go, though. Yeah, I can. Yeah. All right? There's more important things than this. Yes. Are you okay? Well, I don't know about that. 
I mean, I want to give him one more round. Although the doctor went in there and gave him that finger move, and it seemed like he was okay, but he just stopped it. I, I love, I, I think his corner is, is beyond reproach. Bunima's corner behaved perfectly throughout this entire fight. I believe it shouldn't have gone one round further, and they made the right call. A brilliant, stunning performance by Sergio Martinez. A statement to the rest of the 154-pound weight class. And indeed, everybody in that neighborhood, 147-pounders and 160-pounders as well. The statement would be normally, don't fight me. Let's take a look at the replay. And there you see Raul Caiz waving it off. So the referee ultimately makes the call with the help of a corner that understood that their fighter's well-being might be at stake. You heard one of the managers in the corner saying, there are more important things than this. Harold, your observation? And no, Jim, baby, and the doctor no. has the right to stop the fight in California. Raul Caiz called the doctor in at the end of the eighth round, and the doctor stopped the fight. So Raul Caiz waved his arms, the fight's over. But the doctor did stop it. Good call. I'm going to say, given his, normally the statement made in a fight like this is, don't fight me. I'm a slick southpaw. I'm too athletic, too good. However, given Martinez's good looks, his, his kind of charisma in the way he fights, the excitement he creates, in fact, I think the statement was, you got a new guy at 154 pounds. Big time entertainment value. <laughs> Big time entertainment value provided by Sergio Martinez of Argentina and now living in California. Let's go to Jake Gutierrez for the official particulars on the knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, at the advice of the ringside physician, referee Raul Caiz Sr. stops this contest at the end of the eighth round. The winner, and now the WBC interim super welterweight champion, Sergio Maravilla. Well, let's take a look at CompuBox numbers, which will be markedly one-sided in favor of Sergio Martinez and will provide a profile of the beating he dealt out to a good, solid veteran in Alex Bonema. Total punches landed. 31 punches landed in the whole fight. Martinez, 212. So he lands 181 punches more. He throws 302 punches more. He triples Benema's connect percentage. All of that started with a blistering jab, thrown with rapid fire precision by Martinez and landed over and over and over. Jabs, he lands 89 more, he throws 160 more, he more than triples Benema's percentage. And you saw that right jab snake into Benema's face with physical effect over and over and over. And that set up the power shots, where the dominance will be even more pronounced. He lands 92 more power shots. He throws 142 more. And he more than doubles Benima's connect percentage. The only punch that Benima threw with any effectiveness in the fight, predictably, was the straight right hand. And even there, they were very few and far between, while Martinez landed right hooks and left crosses brilliantly throughout the fight. About the only punch he didn't show us was the uppercut, and there were very few inside exchanges. They were seldom shoulder to shoulder, so there were very few opportunities for Martinez to even consider throwing the uppercut. Still to come tonight.